Hello guys, and I know it is unbearably difficult to wait for the results of presidential elections in Russia. Such an intrigue. Who will be the next Tsar of Russia for the next six years? Will it be Putin number one, Putin number two, or Putin number three? Or how many more doubles does he have? Unfortunately, there are millions of small Putin's doubles who support his policy. And honestly, I think even if these elections were real, were not falsified, it is very likely that Putin would still be chosen the president, the so-called president of Russia. I hope there would be more protests all around the country, especially taking into account that war is now returning back to Federation. There are lots of explosions, fires, air raid alerts, but no. Of course, there were some Russians who decided to join the initiative introduced by the widow of Navalny to show up on the 17th of March at midday at voting points all around the world. And they showed up in Europe, but nothing very vivid, very visible inside Russia. So if there will be change, it will come from a different direction. And yes, I mean Russian volunteer corps who took control over lots of military bases in Kursk and Bel Belgorod regions and continue taking more Russian army hostages and destroying more Russian military targets on the territory of the Federation. There is also an epitome of explosions all around Russian oil refineries, Macron promising international soldiers in Ukraine, and I start liking Macron more and more. So let me provide you with the most important updates of this week from an ordinary Ukrainian perspective. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. Of course, all of us are really attentive, waiting for some change inside Russian Federation. And of course, we do not expect these will be a tremendously unusual results of elections. I honestly hope there would be some protests, there would be something bigger than people throwing green liquid in a voting points or, I don't know, something minor. What we do, we protest and especially I loved one photo that YouTube would never allow of a neutralized Russian soldier next to a voting uh, point on the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine because nobody wants to participate in this fake Russian anything. Because Russia is all about fake. Fake elections, fake country, fake special military operation. And that's why we may say that these fake elections failed on the territory of Ukraine, even if it is temporarily, very temporarily occupied. All around Russia, there were no serious protests. There were some meetings uh, all around Europe, but they don't promise anything serious, contrary to Russian Freedom Legion, Russian Volunteer Corps, Siberian Battalion that are continuing their special liberation operation in Belhorod and Kursk regions. And honestly, it is total BS how Putin pretends and all of his media pretend that everything goes smoothly, elections are fine, when actually they've lost control over two of their regions. Once again, imagine something similar happening in your country when the president lost control of two states, two regions, two oblasts and pretends everything is fine and continues fake elections process. Also, uh, today I have come across a very beautiful meme counting the number of serious, big, important Russian oil refineries destroyed. And it was called like uh, Russian oil refinery bingo when you have to cross out the ones that are neutralized. And actually there are less than a half of big left. Thumbs up to special military operation of Ukrainian drones. And if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine democratic world and to see Putin defeated. And not only on his elections, but I mean literally see him hanging in the Hague. Yeah, I love this play of words. Anyway, uh, I think that this movements, liberation movements inside Russia, military movements can grow bigger. And it is a task of Ukrainian intelligence services to help them grow bigger. 
And also, I do like what Macron says recently. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about his promises. And I do not understand this rapid switch of his rhetorics. Because at the start of brutal Russian invasion back in 2022, he was talking with Putin for hours. And I used to mock him for doing that because... From the Ukrainian perspective, we all knew it's nonsense to speak with such evil and I like it when you quote a joke, how to know when Russian is lying, his lips are moving. It's all about Russian politics, it's all about Russian diplomacy. So I felt really sorry for Macron for hours he spent talking to crazy, honestly crazy Putin that was lost in the world of his Ruski Mir fantasies. And now I love watching the switch when he speaks about sending international troops to Ukraine. And um, I know many other politicians, EU politicians are terrified with this idea. But why, guys? There are different options how the soldiers can um, strengthen democracy in Europe. They may not uh, spend uh, their service on the front lines. This might be left for Ukrainian soldiers, but to control the front line, to, to back up safe territories, that might be good. Especially taking into account that according to German intelligence services, Putin is getting ready to attack NATO country in 2026. And we don't know if it's about one country, more countries, and it does not have to be a very big attack. It may be something minor, but something that will degrade the attitude to NATO, that will demonstrate that allies are not that quick to start Article 5 or something, that they have doubt, that once again they will not want to escalate, and that will be a signal to China and other authoritarian regimes, look, NATO is not working properly. So if we have this data, if we have all the symptoms that Putin is fighting, not just against Ukraine or Georgia or, I don't know, Moldova, he is fighting against democratic world where people respect each other, where there is freedom, where there is diversity, where there is election. And this definitely means that sooner or later, and unfortunately sooner, he is ready to attack NATO and Europe. And why not get ready to that. Why not send some international troops to Ukraine just to observe, just to look how this real big war of the 21st century with drones, with other technologies look like? Let me know in the comments what do you think about this idea. While Ukrainian drones are following beautiful strategy of Ukrainian armed forces that are now very limited in resources and we do need your help but they are reaching really deep inside Russian rear and destroying Russian oil refineries. There are more than six that were targeted this week. It was actually difficult for me to count them all and I love when it's about the big number. And oil refineries are vital for fueling Russian military machine because all of that tanks, aircraft, they need fuel, but also these money fuel Russian economy. And by destroying one by one big Russian oil refinery, we ruin the main product of their export. Because once again, Russia is not about innovations. Russia is not about technology. It's a country of dig and sell economy. And by destroying their oil refineries, we actually burn Russian money, Russian reputation and Russian tanks. And I love it. So this was a hot week and in any normal country, of course, there would be no presidential elections. But as there are no real elections for Putin, it is okay on his way to the throne. But thrones are good for overthrowing to many plays of words today. Anyway, let's watch and see. Let me know what do you think about these elections in general and will European countries, countries of the North America, actually... Uh, consider them legitimate and will they continue naming Putin a president? This is what bothers me a lot because some still look for options to uh, make it look legitimate, to make Putin look legitimate, negotiable and so on. When we all know this is just the greatest and the most famous world criminal with the Hague and order of the International Criminal Court waiting for him. 
And some big news. Uh, the documentary I was talking about will be on air today on YouTube channel and soon it will be showed on the national television telemarathon if you heard about that. We already have English subtitles, but soon it will be dubbed into English. This is a documentary, Big Russian Lie, which tells about dangerous Russian propaganda narratives in different spheres of life. And the first series today start with history. I'm a presenter and narrator there and the co-author of um, the plot. This is a great honor for me to work with Suspilna Kultura, with Natalia Ponomariv and her family team. And I hope you will like it. I will leave the link in the community. Let me know what you think, but there will be an English dubbed version, not just subtitles. So if you want to wait, you can wait and see it in this perfect English mode. Thank you so much for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons and helping me grow, learn and produce more. Uh, thank you so much for all the advice, comments and for being friends. If you're new to the channel, remember to join us. Also, if it's not difficult and if you like the videos, leave thumbs up and help more videos become visible on YouTube. Subscribe to my Instagram, X and threads and join my Discord community and do check our merch shop with lots of good items, t-shirts, sweatshirts, stickers, cups, that work well as conversation starters and reminders about Ukraine. But most importantly, thank you for standing with Ukraine. Together we will win. Russia is all fake, just like Putin with his Botox, just like these elections that are not elections at all, just like this protests that are not real protests. And I hope that more and more strong people will organize to liberate the world from this evil. And we are definitely a part of this liberation movement. Thank you for being friends. Slava Ukraini!